Well, hi, and welcome to Jim's Radio Shop. Today, we're going to be comparing the Satellite 800 Millennium Radio by Grundig, that's this one here, against the SP600 uh, well known Hammerland radio from the late 50s, which is here. Switch it on, let it warm up. Now, I'll talk about these radios for a minute. This radio is from around the year 2000, and this one's from 40 years earlier. And I don't have one handy, but if I had a, a small shortwave transistor radio, I'd hold it up. I have some in some of my other videos, and you'd see a very distinct difference. And I want to talk about that difference for a minute. Now, when you look at these old radios, this guy, or about it, the, the Collins R398. You see very large, very large front panels. And you might imagine that that's because it's old technology and they hadn't learned how to make things smaller yet. And there might be some truth to that, a little bit of truth to that. And then as the years went by, radios got smaller and smaller. In fact, I can show you one right over here. So here's my ham radio. If you just look at it, it's just loaded with buttons and switches and controls. And you gotta get up a little bit close to it to kinda get a good look at what all those controls are about and read everything on it. If we go back. At first when I saw the Satellite 800, I almost laughed at it. Oh, what a ridiculous looking radio. It's gigantic. Why, it's just as big as those venerable old boat anchors. You can even see a ton of space between the buttons. There's a lot of open space on the front of this. Couldn't they have shrunk this radio? And I think the answer is yes. They could have shrunk it right down, packed it all together. And by doing that, make it actually quite difficult to use. Because one of the beauties of all these large radios is you can sit back a distance, a normal operating distance is arm's length, and still read and see everything quite clearly. There's no multifunction buttons. There's no situations where a button does one thing and then a different mode it does something different. It's very straightforward, which makes it very easy to operate. And I'm sure the designers were thinking about that. And that's how it ended up being so large. I mean, this is all speaker here, of course. But that's why the radio is so large. Ease of operation. And it's true. The Satellite 800 is a very easy radio to operate. And yet, if you've looked at some of my other videos, you'll see that it keeps pace with these big, famous high-performance radios like the R390A and today we're going to be looking at the SP600. So I would say to anybody who comes across a Satellite 800 like this and is thinking about purchasing it but it, it, kind of hesitant because of the bulk of the radio, I'd say you're, you're kind of missing the point. The miniaturization actually works against ease of use. Okay, so let's let's have a listen and compare these two radios. Now, one of the challenges with the SP600 is tuning it to a precise uh, frequency. The the dial is not that accurate by any means, so it's going to be a little challenging here. Uh, but let, let's see what we can do. What we'll try to do is find a strong signal. I think that's what I have tuned in right now. It should be easy to find it on the SP600. Then from there, we can maybe drift off to a, a weaker a weaker signal. So let's have a listen. That's a little better. Now, I should also explain, too, that both these radios are on the same antenna. 
and both of them are running their audio through the same sound system. And so the, those elements are removed from the comparison. They're identical for both. Okay, let's see if we can find this signal. 9580 on our Hammerland. That's now the sound of the Hammerland you're hearing. Okay. There we are. That was actually pretty easy. Let me tune it in properly here. Watch my hands here. SB 600, satellite 800. Let's switch. my ear, those radios sound almost identical. The, there's a small lack of bass response or, or less bass response in the SP600 and it's known for that. It's known for not having the best bass response. In terms of clarity and the like, uh, they're virtually identical. It's pretty hard to hear a difference. Curious thing about the Satellite 800 is there's a slight hum. I don't know if that's picked up. Uh, on camera here or not. I'll switch back and forth and listen very carefully and you'll hear a hum. The hum comes and goes and it seems to match the signal strength as if the harder the ABC works in the satellite the more hum is introduced. It's very curious I'm trying to sort out exactly where this is coming from. From time to time you don't hear this at all and, you know, what can I say? It seems to depend upon the positioning of the radio. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, it's, I, I notice other people have complained about the same sort of problem with the satellite. So let's listen again. You can listen for the hum on the satellite and the variation in bass response. So, SP600, satellite. For another interest rate cut tomorrow. The last time interest rates moved during an election in 2007, rates went up. This time it's different. I think what we're seeing basically is a economy that's still growing and continues to slowly grow and lower. So the Reserve Bank's expected to cut interest rates, setting a new. Okay, another comparison that we can make is we can listen to the uh, speaker on the uh, satellite, the built-in speaker. And retail and banking, which has slumped to its lowest level in four years. Shall we face the financial crisis? Mm -hmm. 
I think now you can hear the hum. It's more pronounced on the... Uh, and there was no growth in retail spending during the sales months of June, leaving the rise of a year as the switch radios now. Latest retail sales growth since 1961, so the announcement of an election date has been broadly welcome. The fact that there will be certainly Okay, now we'll go for a weaker signal. This signal is uh, producing uh, about 40 dB over on the SP600 and the satellite it's around uh, a 6 or 7 on the S meter. Uh, S meters are notoriously non-standard but I've noticed the satellite really never gets up into the high the higher range. And the AVC is very strong apparently on it. So let's see if we can find a weaker signal to compare. Okay, we'll, we'll try this signal. It's fading in and out. When it fades out, it'd be a good test signal. It is a perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your dwellings. You shall not eat any fat or any blood. Not just a simple illustration, but here we see Moses pinning down. Okay, we're listening to a religious station, probably from the States. So let's listen on the SP 600. I brought to the pulp of this book written by a medical doctor, which I'm still trying to find out if we can. If you look very carefully, you can see the signal leader here. I read from page 84. He says, In the past few years, and this was written, it's a copyrighted date, about uh, 1967. In the past few years, medical science has awakened to the fact that the eating of animal fat is an important cause of arteriosclerosis. This fat forms the tiny fatty cholesterol tumors within the walls of the arteries, which hinder the flow of blood. Now, in this decade, magazines, radio, and TV are... Now, unfortunately, the signal is not fading enough now. <laughs> Let's try another one. By cutting down our... Okay, there's WWV at ten megahertz. There now. Let's try and hunt down one more weaker signal. Okay, let's 
That's actually eleven eight sixty. Let's compare this signal where it's uh, a little weaker. So one of the things that's going on here is uh, this radio is set to a 6 kilohertz bandwidth and the Hammerland is set to an 8 kilohertz. So I'll change the Hammerland. Unfortunately, it's going to go all the way down to 3. That's the only option I have. 3 kilohertz, a little tight. I can also adjust this one for 4 kilohertz. Maybe we can compare the two at that point. What's happening right now is you can hear a lot more noise on the SP600. A little broader bandwidth is probably responsible for that. So let's let's turn it down. I think that, that's probably enough comparison. Uh, my own opinion about this is uh, they're both running about the same sensitivity. Seems as if the satellite produces a signal, uh, an audio signal with a little less noise in it, uh, as if it's receiving a stronger signal than the SP600, especially when the signal drops to a very low level. So, hmm, I hate to say this, but maybe the satellite's working a little better than my SP600. Let's tune around the satellite a little bit because one of the, the, the main attraction of the SP600 is this huge tuning knob and the wonderful feel of tuning it. It, it, it really is a wonderful radio to operate and the fact that you can whip the dial. Let's just tune around on the 800 a little bit for comparison. 
Okay, let's try another one. This is quite interesting. That's the hammer link. And now, uh, Hammerland on 3 kilohertz. Let's go over to satellite. Okay, so again, this, this humming problem in the satellite, uh, it's really affecting the sound quality. It's quite noticeable on this station. It's causing a, what I would call a garbling of the sound. I'm switch again. And there's no garbling in the six in the Hammerland 600. So this hum thing with the satellite 800 is it's definitely a problem. I really don't know what's causing it. I don't know if it's an external factor, position of the radio seems to show up sometimes and not others. For a while I thought it was anytime you use the whip antenna you got the hum. And that seems to be what other people have determined too. So I need to know a little more about that. But I think the short story is that uh, all these radios are wonderful, um, including the Satellite 800. Uh, boy, if you could pick one of those up at a low cost, uh, I would grab it regardless of the size of the radio, even though it looks a little goofy. It comes with a handle. <laughs> I guarantee you these radios don't have handles. <laughs> There's a few pounds difference between them. So, well, thanks very much for watching. I think that was a pretty thorough comparative test of these two radios, and uh, hope it hope it helps you uh, if you're interested in the satellite 800. I hope I don't scare you away from it because of the hum. Um, it's it's an excellent radio. That's uh, that's how it seems uh, to me. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.